Do welcome in Jermaine Illuminor, of course, tackle for the Giants. Jermaine, we didn't have a chance to have you on last week after the win. So, of course, two games have passed since we've last had you on. I do, though, want to start with your former team. There's some news about Devontae Adams potentially being traded. What was Adams like? What was going on with him and the Raiders with your time there with the Las Vegas? Yeah, um, you know, Tay's my guy. Obviously, he's one of the best in the league. I'm not sure what's entirely going on over there, but I know that he truly cares about winning, and he loves to win, and he puts everything into this game, and he damn near wears his heart on his shoulder, on on his sleeve, as they say. So, you know, I know how he feels about winning and how much he puts into this and how much time and effort he puts into this game. So I don't, like I said, I don't know about the whole trade thing, but, you know, I know that he just goes out there and he wants to play ball as hard as he can, and he loves the game. You think he was happy there? You think he was happy there? Yeah, I mean, what my time there, mm-hmm. um, you know, while well, I mean, when AP took over, he was definitely happy. I mean, we all were happy when AP took when <laughs> AP was running things. You know, you know that was a hell of a time, and you know, I would obviously play my best ball when AP took over, and I know that a lot of the guys there, or all the guys there, love AP, and he's doing a hell of a job there right now to have him at five hundred, and all of them are going to run through a brick wall for him, and I have nothing but respect and love for AP. So. I don't know what's going on with that relationship. I can't really comment on that too much. I can just say that when I was there, everything was smooth sailing, and we all went out there trying to win every single game for him. And we almost won every single game that he took over. You know, for if it wasn't for little things here and there, we went five and four his nine games, but easily could have went nine and zero. Oh, you know. Mm-hmm. All right. So from from Adams to uh, who's an established superstar to a blossoming superstar, your teammate Malik Neighbors. How's you know? Obviously, I want to, I know you want to stay in your lane, but how is he feeling? What do you know about Neighbors so far? So I actually don't know nothing, but I just know the type of guy he is, and you know, if he can play on Sunday, then he's definitely going to try to play. Well, let me ask you this, Jermaine. What like what was different about him when he showed up? You've been in the league for a little bit. You understand, mm-hmm. you know, talent and, and and like everybody's talented, but like that that real separation of talent. What what jumped out initially when you first started seeing Malik Neighbors on the practice field? I think just his poise. He's real. He's far above his age, and he's beyond the years that he's played. In my opinion, meaning that he doesn't act like a rookie. He doesn't present himself like a rookie, and he doesn't walk around like he's a rookie. He, like, he acts and he plays like a season vet, and he plays like one of the best receivers in the league. And you know, I tell him that every single like every single day during games. Like you know, it's hard to be consistent in the NFL, but if you can find a way to be consistent, you can be great. And you know, that's something I try to do every single day too. And, and really, just speaking from my own um, experiences around great players and the player I'm trying to be too, just give him knowledge and help him in as many ways as I can. But he's been a great player for us. Obviously, he's the main player on offense. And like I said on X the other day, like I truly think he's one of the best receivers in the NFL. Jermaine, I was at the game Thursday night. You guys were in it uh, almost the entire way. Take me through what happened in the huddle or on the field, fourth and goal from the three-yard line in the third quarter, and you decided to – Dable decided to kick a field goal. Yeah, um – you know, we had a play design on that third down. If it would have hit, then it would have been a touchdown. But that's the NFL. You know, it's a game of inches, and you can have a correct play call. But if the defense just makes a great play, you can't, you can't really um, do anything about that. And the Cowboys have a really good jump linebacker. I think his name's Overshadowing, Overshadowing, something like that. That kid from Texas. He's a he's a pretty good player, and he's a freaking ball hawk, and he he's pretty damn athletic. So he made a hell of a play. If not, then Wondell would have walked in. So on third down and fourth down, obviously a tight game like that, you don't want to risk anything. You want the points. You know, obviously if we would have went for it, then who knows what would happen. But I can't talk like that or think like that. I just got to do what Dave wants to do. And like I said before, I follow him and I'll run through a brick wall for Dave. So. Yeah, I, obviously you, you've got to run the play that's cold there. But I would imagine in the huddle, and I don't want to speak for you, but in the huddle, kind of looking around saying, let's go. Let's go get a couple of yards here. Let's go eat. Wouldn't, wouldn't you want the coach to say, let's go get a touchdown? Yeah, but the thing is, with tight games like that, just say you don't get a touchdown, the Cowboys have all the momentum, they get the ball back, drive down the field, score a touchdown. Then it's a, what, what was the score at that point? 14-9 or something yeah. like that? 14-9. Yeah, it would have made a 14 tw- Yeah, 14-9. So the field goal made a 14-12. Yeah, so, you yep. guys didn't fight back exactly. at all on that? No, I mean, you, typically, just my experience, 
when the coaches make a decision like that, you just really go for it. I mean, sometimes you have guys in the huddle saying, let's go for this, let's go for this, and sometimes the coach will listen to it. But I think usually if guys are vocal about it, because sometimes the coach will just go for it depending on how the game's going. But at that point, it was probably safer just to get the three, let the defense get a stop, get us back on the field, and then drive down the field again and get a touchdown because we were driving the ball up and down the field on them. We really stopped ourselves from that game. And, and what's the issue? Why can't you guys put the ball in the end zone? You know what? I Just little things, honestly, like little plays that we need to execute better. Obviously, I can be better in certain aspects of the run game. You know, we all can. There's little things that each of us in the offensive line can be better at that we're going to work on this week. And having this little time off helped us just reflect on that. And it's only a quarter of the NFL season that's going by. We still have 13 more games. So I'm really excited to, you know, get this Seattle game underway and do everything we need to do to get out there with a win. Yeah, you know, listen, the wins, uh, that's what matters, but so does progress here. And we're talking to Jermaine Illuminor, of course, Giants, BT and Sound on the fan. You know, last year when you were with the Raiders, the first couple of games were just really ugly. 40-zip Dallas, the Niners game was not pretty. Outside of the Vikings game week one, you guys have been very competitive, and there's been a lot that you can pull from each game positively. But, like, well, that's got to expire soon. It's it's time to start begging wins. So, after the first month of the season, where are the Giants? You're a smart guy. You know the team. Give us your synopsis of the team so far overall. Yeah, I think that, obviously, we've made progress. But, like you said, the only thing that matters at the end of the day are wins. And it doesn't matter if you win by a freaking 50 or you win by one. Like at the end of the day, all that matters is winning. And that's what we truly care about. So, I mean, yeah, there's been progress. You know, you didn't get blown up by the Cowboys like apparently they did last year. I don't really care about that. I want to win, and so does everyone else. So progress will come when we're winning games, which we will. Did you guys, Jermaine, watch Monday Night Football last night with the Seahawks? Yeah, I watched that game. Um, yeah, because we played them, so I wanted to kind of you know, get a little free read on them to see what they're about and how their defense flies around the ball and just what type of team they are. Do you think you guys can keep pace with that offense? I mean, it looked like they couldn't be stopped. I know they lost the game, but can you keep pace with that offense? Yes, I definitely think so. I'm I'm really confident in my guys, and like I said, we all want to win. I'm not going to sit here and not be confident. I mean, you guys have spoken to me for five weeks, now. I think if there's one thing you know about me is that I'm the most confident guy in the world. You so. are. We appreciate that. We, have. And we, by the, we, we like that. And by the way, you've been good, too. You're a good player for this team on a much improved <laughs> offensive line. So, yeah. That. And unfortunately, you know, like I said, I was really looking forward to talking to you last week. We couldn't because of your schedule change, but I would have liked to talk to you after the win. So I don't want to be overly negative yeah. here, but at some point, you got to be judged based on the record, and the record not very good through four weeks. No, 100%. Well, one, well, one and three. I mean, you know, if things go our way in certain games, and maybe the record is different, but kind of think like that. You just got to think how we are, like what's going on right now and what we need to improve on. And this week's going to be key for us, improving those little things in practice tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Friday, Seattle on Saturday, and, you know, play heck of a game. How do you simulate the the environment that Seattle? That's a tough spot to play, obviously. How do you simulate that? Yeah. I mean, I've played there um, twice now. Well, once was during COVID, so obviously that was nothing. But we played there. Um, two years ago, and it's a—I mean, I love playing environments like that. There's nothing better than going to an away team where it's one of the best environments in the um, NFL, and just going there and playing ball. You know, I know a lot of guys probably don't like being in crowds like that, but I think that you know, if you love football and you love you know going to war as offensive linemen, that you love playing in places like that where it's loud as hell, you can't hear yourself think. You know, your head's, your head's rattling. You want to see this person next to you talking. Or you can hear just the crowd booing you, saying things. The noise is freaking out of this world. That gets me excited. So I don't know about y'all, but I freaking love that type of environment. You go in there, you know, you can walk out there with a W. That says a lot about you as a team and about the individual as a person. So, you know, like I said, it's going to be definitely going to be a war this weekend. And it's going to be a fun one. And you know our deal, Jermaine. I don't want to hear 72 being called for a false start. Going to be challenging in Seattle. Let, uh-huh. let's no, keep it clean. You've been doing a good job. Let's keep it clean on Sunday. Yeah, I mean, I need to, me personally, I need to be better with the penalties. Obviously, the holding call going against Micah, you know, you know, I can think what I want to think about that. But, 
like I, yeah, I need to be better with that, which I will. But like I said, I feel like I'm pretty good with the salary count now. So yeah, that happens. Hey, that that happens. Holding, you're gonna have some penalties, but in this crowd going nuts, the false start so it could set you guys back and derail the offense. We don't want any of that. At least if we, if you do get it, I don't want to hear from 72. I don't want to see 72 be called. Hey, I'm gonna try my best out there. That's one thing. Good luck, Jermaine. Good luck on Sunday. Hopefully we talk to you next Tuesday coming off a big win in Seattle. That is the plan. That is the freaking plan. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> there you go. This is, this is, I, I, tell you, I love his energy. Yeah, me too. We got to get him in studio one of these weeks or at least go out there. I was going to go out there Thursday and, and it'd be in the post-game locker room afterward, but they were losing. Yeah. They didn't want to deal with that, and it would have been a long night anyway. But I, he seems like a great dude. I Jermaine. bet he's a great teammate. Yeah. Like, that is all, that's an authentic uh, authentic guy right there. He, he's, he's a foxhole dude. I know that that hey, sounds cliche, but he definitely is. But those things, I know we, we harp on it. We kind of joke about them <laughs> with the false starts. First of all, the Giants offense is just not good enough to overcome come that very few are we saw it kill the jets oh, on sunday gosh. but on the road in that environment yeah that's where it takes extreme discipline yeah that's the difference one false start is the difference in having a successful drive or a poor drive giants will be able to drive the football pretty well this year mm-hmm. need to be able to finish and to beat seattle they're gonna have to drive the football and finish. Well, you mentioned the Jets with the penalties. Yeah. The Broncos couldn't score if you spotted them seven yards on, on a first down. Uh, the Seattle can. So, yeah, I mean, John's gonna have to be really buttoned up. Uh, what's the spread, by the way? Did you see it? It was three uh, and a half, four. I did not. If I had a guess, I actually looked at the Jets when I pulled up here real quick. I don't even know what the Jets spread is. What is it? Well, take a guess because okay. I have that. Yeah, pull them both I'm up. Pulling I'm gonna say on, our neutral phone, site. Refresh. I'm going to say. All right, I got it. Minnesota by one and a half. Two and a half. All right, two and a half Minnesota. We got the Giants here. I'm going to say that it's Seattle by four. Six. Six? Yeah. It's a big number. I mean, it seems pretty. It's a I big mean, number. Look what they did last night, Seattle. Yeah, true. Even in the loss, you can't, you couldn't stop, Detroit couldn't stop them. It's a big number. It is a big, why well, you take mm. the Giants plus six in that? I yeah. wouldn't take that feeling good. No, no, I wouldn't. That, this is going to be, this, this is, is a, a tough spot. touch game, I think. This is a for, tough for spot. For, this will show you something with the Giants. Can they keep this close? Now, again, not about keeping close. Got to get a win. Well, that's it.